Oh, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Could we get the roaming mic turned on, please? Yeah, or maybe we have to turn it on. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, so we're, we're, not, we're only going to talk for about 15 minutes and then maybe leave some time open for questions. Um, and we didn't have a lot of slides or anything. And I know Sue sort of started off her talk, or didn't start it off, but included some 10th anniversary stuff in her talk. Um, but to recap, I'm Stephen Walling. Um, I'm from English Wikipedia and Commons, and I'm also a fellow at the Wikimedia Foundation in the Community Department. Um, and this is Mocha. Um, Mocha Pantages, a communications, global communications manager. Um, I work with Jay Walsh in the communications department. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to talk about sort of the things that the foundation did to try and help the community celebrate the 10th anniversary. Um, I think it was kind of an interesting case for the role of the foundation in the movement um, because it was really a facilitating, like, sidestepping like role where we didn't throw a party, we didn't like organize some event, um, or, or you know, just put something on ourselves or just do press things ourselves. Um, we tried to play. Uh, helping role to the community to do whatever it is that they wanted to do. Um, and the good news is that it, it seemed to have worked. On, on 10.wikipedia.org, which is the wiki we set up um, to sort of facilitate event organization, there were 470 events listed. I'd say probably a much more conservative number of those actually happened, maybe half if we were really lucky. And then we actually shipped um, merchandise to about 50 of them with 73 boxes of merchandise, so like about 5,000 or so t-shirts and buttons and stickers and other things. Um, so merchandise was sort of one of the incentives, I think, for people to sort of throw events. Um, but there were also like a really huge diversity of things. Um, just some of the stats for events here were 117, 113 different countries. And then one of the most interesting things in my mind is actually that the number one country was India with like uh, how many events? Oh, I forget. It's not really listed here. But I think almost a hundred. Yeah. A lot, let's put it that way. Um, which was pretty interesting and presented some interesting like shipping difficulties, that sort of thing. Um, but it was a fun project and I, I don't know. Do you want to talk about design stuff now? Definitely. Okay, cool. Um, so just to recap kind of what Stephen was saying, um, the goal here, you know, we were sitting around almost a year out um, and thinking about what could we do to make this special. It's an important milestone um, in the history of our movement. Um, and so at first it was, hey, we got to throw a big party. That's what, um, you know, websites do. Um, that's what big organizations do um, to try to make things special. Um, but as we know, um, it's not sort of the foundation's party, right? It's a the, the party for the movement for all the people all over the world. So it just didn't seem genuine or make sense to centralize a party um, in, in San Francisco um, for a decentralized movement like the Wikimedia movement. Um, and we were sitting around a table and we thought, what could we do? What could we do? Um, and I remember, you know, back in college, um, I had a birthday. It was my, um, uh, I think it was my 18th birthday in college. And um, I couldn't see my boyfriend. And he sit, I got this big box in the mail. Um, you know, it was my first year away from college. I was kind of homesick, or from, from home and I was homesick. And in that box was everything you could, um, which you needed to, to have a party. So it was invitations, it was, you know, party hats, and there was no booze. I was 18. Um, we, were, we were in the States. Um, but there were lots of different things, streamers and stuff like that. Um, and I had a party in my dorm room with my friends. Um, and so kind of thinking about that and also thinking about um, different kinds of work to empower volunteers to um, create their own things um, and have ownership over the things that they do, um, we came up with this sort of party in the box, um, 10th, um, um, anniversary party in the box um, idea. And so that's where um, we, we started our work. Um, so what could we do to give you the tools, um, give you um, the things and the resources that you need to have your own party? Um, and so first we started with sort of an open design system. 
Um, and I think this is one of the, the most productive things that we did was look at how can we make a really simplistic set of design tools or designed tools to help you take them and then localize them into sort of um, into what you wanted the tenure to look like. Um, so that's where we came up. We worked with um, David Peters of um, Expert Design. And he came up with um, what you see here um, and what you've seen and what you've used to localize um, sort of what Wikimedia or Wiki the Wikipedia 10 year anniversary meant to you. Um, there were some at the bottom that I really liked. I mean, and people started to, oh, these here mm -hmm. were really great. So everyone just sort of picked them up and took them to places that we didn't even expect, expect them to go. And then um, the second thing we did was, what else do you do? There, there's also um, beyond design, beyond products and buttons and things. It's how do we talk about it? Um, what do we what do we say? Um, you guys, you know, to articulate sort of how you feel about sort of important events like this. It's sometimes it's hard, um, and it's also difficult to talk about things um, with one voice as a movement when we're all over the world, um, you know, and it's difficult to work together. We're speaking so many different languages. So to, to basically provide draft or stub messaging um, to you guys in the form of press releases, um, you know, draft press releases and communications tools, stories, your own stories, and really providing you the, the resources to tell your own story. Um, so teaching, um, volunteers how to write, or that it's important to write letters to the editor, um, or to reach out to local press and tell your own local stories. Um, so that's what we did there. Um, and I would say it, some of it was successful, um, and some of, some of it wasn't so successful. We started early, and you know we tried to um, work together to you know um, pull out interesting key facts about um, the the movement over the last ten years. And, and as you know, there are different disparate pieces of information all over um, Meta, and you know all over the sites, all all of the wikis. Um, and it was really difficult to really get like one answer to different questions, like you know what were the first ten articles ever created in Wikipedia, like you know those kinds of things where there were there wasn't consensus yet. Um, so that's, um, I think, one place that we probably work harder. And then in terms of media, we all know it was huge. Um, in many ways, media was ready. They were ready to tell sort of the positive story about the movement. Um, well, um, and, and that's what they did. Some of the stuff that we did to try and help it along, um, let's see. So I'm. I think um, we're, you know, most of you have sort of read a lot of the coverage probably in your own languages and stuff, but in the States, I did a little bit of analysis on um, LexisNexis, and, you know, Google turned 10 in 2008. We had significantly more coverage than Google when they turned 10. When eBay and Amazon turned 10 combined the coverage that press gave them, we got more than them combined. So I think it's partly because we're loved um, and partly because um, we, we gave them opportunity, we reminded them, we started a month out and we, we let press know, um, international press, and then also had you guys send out um, you know, press announcements a month just to get them ready and prepared. And then understanding how how the flow of media works internationally. So when you talk about The Daily Show and the impact The Daily Show has um, on an international um, global media audience, um, we started that two weeks prior so that people, it would get on the radar, right? And people would start the positive story because, you know, um, uh, John Stewart typically has sort of a positive, um, he has positive feelings about Wikipedia um, and that reflected in the interview that he did with Jimmy Wells. And so that just spun out and it, and it created a sort of a positive stream. Speaking of that, do you want to talk about the Jimmy video a little? Do you remember that? Oh, you got it. Yeah, okay. So we, in addition to that, we also did um, like a really, two really short videos with Jimmy. He just like flew to San Francisco for like a night and then left. And we shot it in like the lobby of the foundation. Um, and that was pretty interesting because we just, it was just sort of jet lagged and he like threw it together. But it got localized in several languages with the open subtitles. Um, um, and project we, and we were able to see we were able to use those um, the Jimmy video was really great because because that's what people you know I think what 
what happened here was that it gave us an opportunity to all work together and speak in one voice and feel a part of a movement, to actually feel connected. You looked at all the photos. Every, they were all different. There were different contexts, different countries, you know, different cultures. But there, you could see the same T-shirts and the same buttons and the same sort of similarities um, in what you were doing together, like cakes and things like that. And then also Jimmy dropped in, um, and you either played the video or he tried to Skype in to as many places as he could around the clock. Um, and it really helped feel like we were all connected. And I think that was the most important outcome. And I think the most valuable thing that we can take away from the 10 year anniversary is you know, these kinds of um, programs, so even Wiki Loves Monuments, those kinds of things, it's a way for us to really get together and speak with one voice and feel the same thing um, as a movement. So I think that is uh, one of the, the biggest takeaways for me. And then also, I think lessons learned. Um, make it easy on the volunteers. So we provided drafts, we provided tools, we provided just guidance to collaborate on. So I like to call it stub articles. You know, we, we, we sent those to you and then you took them further and you built on top of them and you created them into, you know, what they were for you, the tools and, um, you know, the important resources they were for you, but we just started them for you. And I think that's what our role at the foundation is, is to make it easy for you, to provide drafts for you so that you can take them forward. Um, and I think, do you have? Yeah, um, I mean, on the, the sort of, um, the two sides that I really worked on were um, the sort of online organizing 10 wiki side itself and the merchandise with Jay. Um, on the merch side, um, while we sent out a lot of it and it was, it, it itself seemed pretty, people were happy about it. I think we did learn some pretty interesting lessons for um, the Wikimedia Foundation like online store that's gonna be built um, in the next, in the coming year. Um, just about like shipping providers, costs, that sort of thing. I mean, shipping costs were about $10,000, which was double what we estimated, which we weren't happy with. Um, as far as the 10 wiki side, it was really interesting because I pushed really hard on having a separate wiki on a separate domain, and every single person I ever talked to was like, that's the most idiotic idea I've ever heard. Not a, yet, in, like, not another wiki. In fact, I think there's an English Wikipedia essay against not another wiki, and there are really compelling reasons not to do it, like the watch list problem. Like, if it's not on my watch list, I don't see it. There's no cross wiki with watch lists yet. Um, so that's a problem. But I do really strongly believe, we actually started out on Meta on out and outreach wiki, trying to sort of create a, a smaller space within those wikis to try and do exactly what we did. But once I moved it to a separate domain with its own logo and its own space, and you show up, and there's calls to action that say immediately, like, organize an event, share what you know, design something, or use the designs we have, apply for merch. Like, creating a, its own space that was, like, separate gave people room to think and get really involved. Um, and going forward, like, we have to think about ways I think, to be able to do that, but within a technical architecture that doesn't require ops setting up an entirely new wiki and then eventually maybe folding it into meta or other spaces right now because it just takes way too much organizational overhead. Um, but unless Mocha had anything else, I think we wanted to open it up for questions um, before we move on to the Wiki Loves Monuments talk. I'm not sure what our time is like right now, but okay, we're good. Okay, does anybody have any questions? At all? How, how many people, well actually I have one question first. How many people um, went to a 10th anniversary event somewhere around the world? That's awesome. Yeah. I love you guys. <laughs> um, uh, I think there are questions. And then there. questions, Sarah, someone else? Awesome. Oh, okay, we, we, thanks. And there's feedback, questions or feedback. Yeah, um, yeah. We're, yeah. Do we have a, a questions mic? We can answer with this one. Thank you. Hi, I, I just wanted to make uh, the case for event photography. Um, yeah. And as I was uh, after the Wikipedia 10 events browsing a lot on comments and comparing photographs against actual events that either took place or were intended to take place, there were a lot of gaps. And that made me sad. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, these photographs are the one thing that extends the impact of these events beyond the one day during which they took place. They are, in and of themselves, an important outreach resource which we can use in all our resources, which also lets us communicate 
by the way, there are people in Delhi, there are people in um, Bangalore who are celebrating Wikipedia or participating in Wikipedia, which is a very important message to receive as a person living in those places. So if you do something, I would encourage you very strongly to think ahead of time how you're going to document it, but also I think at the foundation we should perhaps think a bit more about how we can make that a built-in part of the way that we incentivize and, uh, event creation by saying, you know, you got to document it. That's the one thing you got to do. There's no strings attached. Just show up, but you got to take photos and put them on comments. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree because, um, I mean, just even in the United States, which is, um, there were people who came out of the woodwork in places where there aren't chapters or even potential for chapters all over the country. Um, and just seeing photos from places like Colorado or wherever where there's not usually regular meetups or that kind of thing, or even way more far-flung places like Azerbaijan, Mongolia, like people where like, I don't even think, has anyone met a Wikipedian from Azerbaijan? Like maybe once, I don't know, like that, that kind of thing. Like it was really amazing to see that kind of thing. Even if it's like, just like five or six people with a cake and smiling, like having a good time in a coffee shop or something. Like uh, that was really meaningful, at least to me. And even further, taking photos in general of the work and the outreach that you do um, is really important. I mean, I think we, the, it's powerful in terms of outreach, but it's also powerful in terms of connectedness. Um, I can't tell you how connected I felt to the movement when I saw so many different photos. Every time I see photos of the different kinds of outreach that, that goes on and seeing um, volunteers active and outside in the community and doing things to further the movement, um, it just makes me feel so much more connected to you um, and energized too. And so giving back in, in, in the form of media, um, in images and also I would um, video um, is really, really important to feed the movement. Cool. Other questions? I, okay. Um, I was just going to say with ours, uh, we don't have very many Wikimedians in my city. I'm from Perth, Australia. So what we did was uh, we contacted a number of other like-minded organisations like the University Computer Club, Reddit and a number of other places and I think we ended up having like 21 people come along, it was great. Yeah. But it's a very good idea to do I think in retrospect. I mean some might say well these people aren't Wikimedians etc but I mean I, I, uh, I thought it was a great time. We got to uh, share our experience. They learned quite a lot from us I think about who we are, what we do etc so that was good. Yeah. I, I, that's a really great point to bring up, actually, because many of the most interesting events in my mind connected with other organizations in South America, the United States, and Europe. There were three events that um, were actually held in local hacker spaces, and the, like, the leaders in those group places, which aren't, don't necessarily consider themselves Wikimedians, had really great events. Um, I'm not going to talk about too much about it, because I know Martin and Lodewijk are up next, but I really loved what Wikimedia Netherlands did at the, I forget the name of the museum actually. Amsterdam. Yeah, okay, Amsterdam Museum. But like that, I think that really supported their event really well, holding it at that place and with their support. And they had a really great hackathon too. Um, what else was there? In terms of um, the meetups and parties and things, what I really loved was um, it was easy and it was simple and it was low pressure. Um, you know, there were, events with hundreds of people. There were events with partner organizations and, you know, really um, kind of high profile things. But there are also just people in pubs um, drinking beer and wearing flip flops um, or just hanging out at home. And I think um, just remembering and taking the time and I think we need to figure out how we can continue to do this um, maybe once a year um, is, is just taking that time to celebrate the work that's being done and remembering, um, you know, the past and thinking about the future and things like that um, in a really informal, easy way. Um, but I, that's what I think I loved the most was how easy um, and low pressure it was. Well, for some people. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm Rodrigo from Brazil. Um, I have uh, two daughters. Uh, first one, why do you do videos from Jimmy Wales to put a, this one person in in the front of our community I think have so much more guys so much more important than Jimmy Wales now 
um, I'm thinking it's not alterable. Uh, you are a community, so just not the one guy. I'm thinking why not one video from our community or something like that against them. Jimmy Wales, one person, or very alterable or something like that. And why not saying, not paying one guy to do our logos or stuff like that, interacting with the community and say, oh, I need to do own logo or something like that. You have some ideas. What do you want? To, what do you think that's going to be at 10 years? Not hire a guy outside of the community and do the logos and all the things to the community, to represent the community. So, so the, the first question, I actually totally agree, but it, it was an interesting case is that um, Wikimedia Israel for the 10th anniversary, I mean, for this, this thing wanted to collect a bunch of videos taken um, to do sort of like a, a small like um, run through a collection of all of them that were taken to show everyone. And it turns out that locally people didn't do any video production. Video production is a really like, um, I mean, if you actually do it, if you don't just stand up with a flip cam or something, which is perfectly fine, but it takes a sort of like centralized, like you have to have equipment and go there and have lighting and do all that crap. Um, and I think it's too much of a resource investment for the foundation to go around and try and take videos of every single community it possibly could. Like, I would be, I would have been thrilled to see videos on Commons or even on YouTube taken by community members in their communities, but nobody stepped up and took the initiative to do that. So maybe that's a lesson for next time, but um, Jimmy felt like it was worth it to do a five minute video just from him thanking the community, and I think that was valuable. Um, as to the second question, um, so the, in terms of like, I'm not sure if you had more of an issue with hiring a designer to do single designs or hiring someone to do uh, like organizational stuff. Um, but in terms of the design, like David didn't actually make a whole bunch of logos. He made like one logo that was basically blank and one English one and then laid out steps for local communities to create other logos and of the like, 200 logos and other designs that were made, 90% of them were made by community members and just uploaded to Commons. So it was a community effort, and it was just sort of seeded and started by the Wikimedia Foundation. Like, of the, like, 2,000 people who edited and, like, created events and did stuff on 10Wiki, like, I'm just one person. So I think it's actually in terms of like the design and the organizational side, in terms of not in terms of the spending of the money on the shipping, a really efficient use of the foundation's time and money. Okay, I think we have to wrap up though. We should talk about it later though. Welcome to our presentation. Who already knows about Wikilove's monuments? Uh, it's quite a lot of you. Uh, when we leave Israel after this event, uh, we want to have everyone know about the Wikilove's monuments project. Um, my name is uh, Maarten Dammers, and this is uh, Lodewijk uh, Gelauf. We are the European organizers of Wikilove's monuments. Uh, you can uh, Twitter us, or you can look at our website, or other ways to uh, to, to find us. Uh, so it all started two years ago with windmills. We have lots and lots of windmills in the Netherlands, as you might know. And we had a couple of Wikipedians who are really enthusiastic about windmills and started a project. The goal of the project is to document all windmills and water mills in the Netherlands. So we have about 1,300 of them. Uh, they first started with making long lists of them, because if you want to do a project, you need to go uh, know what your goal is. It's not like we have a bunch of windmills. No, we have 1,300 windmills, uh, so many in each province, and uh, 
you know what you're aiming at, you know what you have to do, so you, you start completing a province or you start completing your city. And the goal was to, for every windmill to have an article and to have a photo and some other uh, metrics to, to have least has, uh, have a good uh, articles. This is a very nice system for, for getting all structures done. So for, for example, for um, lighthouses in the Netherlands, we have a similar project. We just don't have a lot of them like with windmills. So the, the structured wiki pro project, the way like this, this was really the basis for our monuments project. So another project we did uh, that was also two years ago was Wikiloss Art in the Netherlands. Uh, the goal of Wikiloss Art was to get uh, photos of objects in museums. Uh, we had about uh, 45 museums joining in all throughout the Netherlands. Uh, it, it's, um, these museums were uh, coming, most of them came in late. We have a couple of big museums, like the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, joining in. And then the other museums were like, oh, we've got to join in that too. We want to join in. Uh, so we were allowed to take photographs in uh, lots of uh, important museums museums and also the smaller museums in just one month and all these photos were, were uploaded and uh, to Flickr I'm afraid. We, uh, the comments is really difficult for new users back then. So we, we put them on Flickr, did some moderation and put the rest on the comments and this is one of the winning photographs. So that was our first major photo competition. So after that, um, the Wikipedians, uh, after their mill project, they started to work on monuments. And monuments are not buildings like this, uh, with a nice uh, statue of a guy who did something very important, probably. No, we're talking actually about buildings. And then um, it's something like this. It can be a, a house in the middle of a street. It can be. It can be a small thing in a wall. It can be anything, basically. And you see here the high variety of uh, buildings that can be a monument. A monument, what we're talking about here, is a, mo is a building that is protected by the government in some way uh, and is listed as important to keep because it, it represents some kind of a cultural heritage, it represents some kind of a, of a historical significance, or is in another way uh, important enough to not destroy. There's some more left. Yes, we still have. You, you see the huge variety. It can be churches or buildings or small objects. And in the Netherlands, we have 60,000 of those buildings. Um, we have 15 million people, so you can get some kind of uh, an idea. Um, as, to, as a comparison, in some other countries, they have different numbers. Uh, Germany has 700,000, but France has, for example, less monuments than the Netherlands. So the definition differs a bit from country to country. And the community really found this an interesting topic. They, uh, were, they completed the mill project, so they, have, they had all the 1,300 articles with 1,300 photos, and they started to work on uh, something impossible, creating a li list of these 60,000 monuments and getting a photo of every single one of them. So the lists were created with the help of um, the Rijksdienst voor Cultural Erfgoed, which is the national authority for cultural heritage and were uh, split up by municipality. You can imagine if you put 60,000 items in uh, a wiki table, I'm not sure how many people try to do that, but most of the times the browsers crash. So we had to limit it to uh, like a few hundred uh, per, art, per list. And um, this uh, gave us the opportunity to mix um, the two projects we had in advance, like the Mill Project and Wiki Loves Art, and this is the little, the little baby that came out of that. Um, it was a one-month competition run by the community, which is, was very important for the success. The community uh, ran everything behind the screens, and it was very easy. We made it very easy to upload. Back in the days with Wiki Loves Art, we used Flickr for that, and in this, also this time we used Flickr because it has a huge community potential. But in this case, we also tried to use comments because we wanted, as a goal, to, um, to get more people involved in comments. However, with, uh, with the upload form on comments, that was basically impossible. Just for the fun of it, ask your grandmother to use the old comments upload form. Um, 
So what we did is we removed all the fields that are unnecessary. We just tried to, um, to make it as simple as possible, fill in everything for them that we could fill in. And um, that resulted in uh, this kind of photos, uh, which are, oh, oh yes. So this resulted in 250 participants throughout the Netherlands, uh, 12,500 photos of 8,000 different monuments. And as you see, that's already a significant part of the 60,000. And uh, it also resulted in the fact that the Dutch heritage institutions now know Wikimedia Netherlands much better. We already had some contact with museums, but now also we got a whole different part of the heritage field uh, involved. And it opened a lot of doors. It uh, made sure that they wanted to cooperate with us on all kinds of different fields. And these are the winning photos. Uh, we are just going to browse through them. You see that they are very different. They were selected by a jury. They can be, uh, for example, this is the, the, the water line where, where, we, where we were protecting from the Spaniards. Um, this is some building with a nice plant in the middle. Uh, but actually, the one on the left side there, that's the winning photo, um, which might not look too interesting. But if you look to the whole photo, this is uh, a cut out of it. You see that, for example, on the right side, there's exactly the same building as a photo in the photo. Because uh, they were also celebrating their 100 year anniversary. And this is even more interesting, perhaps. <laughs> this map used to be all blue. And a blue pin means there is no photo. This is the city of Leiden, uh, where I'm living. And all these pins are monuments. And during the contest, we turned this from a blue map into a yellow map, a single photo of every monument in town almost. There are just a few left. So I think that's also really indicating the nice uh, results. So we just did this project in uh, September last year. And uh, we had the, the prize ceremony. And we're thinking about it. It was really fun to do. We might do it again. So uh, I was at some conferences in, uh, in London and in Paris and spoke with the, uh, the people there also from other chapters and they were like, mm, this might be fun to do in other countries too. So somewhere in the end of December, beginning of January, we started asking around for chapters, hey, is this something you want to wanna do, want to join in? And slowly but steadily, people started joining in. And this is the map of uh, countries currently involved. It might change a bit. Some countries are coming in late, or some might not be able to, to make it before September. But it's uh, mostly centered on Western Europe, but also all the way into Russia. So this year, we are going to do it uh, all throughout Europe in 15-plus uh, countries, uh, as you could see on the map. Um, Last year we got in contact with uh, some Dutch partners like the Rijksdienst voor Cultureel Erfgoed and uh, uh, Heemschut, that's a bit like Wikimedia, it's a society of volunteers and their goal is to protect heritage in the Netherlands. And we asked them, do you have contacts on the European level? And they got us into contact with, for example, the European Heritage Days, um, we have some consul uh, contacts at the uh, Council of Europe. They're organizing the European Heritage Days. Um, Europeana is also involved in this. So that made it possible for us to, uh, with these European partners to also support other countries in getting uh, a list of monuments and maybe um, the right people to, to speak to. Um, it, the, the competition is federative, so every country is running its own competition, but with the same rules. Um, so otherwise it would be much too complicated, and now every country has its own competition with its own prices, and uh, a bit like Eurovision, but actually not. It's, uh, people keep comparing it with Eurovision because you have this national competition and then the winner goes to the European. It's, we're a bit like that, but everyone sends in 10 photos, so the winning 10 go up to the European competition. And it's mostly learn, um, based on the lessons we learned in uh, 2010. Uh, can you go to the next one? Yeah, here we go. So uh, the goals of the competition, that's up to you. <laughs> 
Yeah, so what you can accomplish with this competition differs, of course, a bit from country to country. But there are a few basic principles we all try to reach, and these are the primary goals, easily measurable, etc. Of course, we want to get as many photos as possible from all the countries throughout Europe. We got 12,500 photos from the Netherlands last year. Well, at least we should be able to beat that. Um, we also want to make people familiar with Wikimedia Commons. It's, of course, a very nice project, but not everybody knows about it. It would be very great if we could make it at least as known as Wikipedia, but maybe that might be a tough goal to hit. Um, we would like to facilitate wiki projects around cultural heritage, because if you have competitions like this, volunteers feel that they are working on something that is appreciated, that is being worked on, and you're part of something bigger. It's not just you editing some lists, but it's also all kind of other people, and it's actually being used, what you're doing. And the, fi uh, the final primary goal is really to connect the online and the offline part of Wikimedia. We have a whole lot of volunteers who are only working on the online side. We have a whole bunch of organization who is working a lot on the offline side as well. Organizing events, organizing parties, etc. These two groups of people have some overlap, but it would be really great if we can get more influx and outflux out of these groups uh, to each other. So um, I think it would be really great if we can touch on these goals. Um, but also there are some secondary goals. They might not be as obvious as the other ones. Uh, we would really uh, explain, like to explain to people, yes, you can edit Wikipedia. And that is because if you are able to upload a photo and the photo really ends up on Wikipedia, then that is a clear image to people like, yes, you can edit it. Yes, you can change it. Yes, you can. And then the capacity in community building. Um, if you are organizing events like this in countries which do not have a chapter or not an active chapter or they don't know what to do, this way we can help from all of Europe in these countries to get something organized. It's relatively easy compared to setting it up all bottom up by yourself because we are taking care of the really hard parts in, on a European level. We're taking care of the technical side, etc. Um, we also want to get more access to the cultural heritage world as, a Europe, as an organization, as Wikimedia. And it would be really great if there is more follow-up on Wikilas Monuments once it's finished. I know the Austrians are doing a wonderful job out, uh, on that, uh, and I hope that also other countries uh, will be able to pursue that. And finally, it would be wonderful if the chapters can, and uh, all the non-chapters are also um, cooperating more on an international level. We have all these national or subnational or transnational uh, organizations, and if we can cooperate more, share our lessons, then that would be a wonderful uh, improvement. So these are basically the, the five reasons why people uh, would join uh, the competition. It's really easy to participate. You don't have to. Uh, you can go whatever time you like. You just step out of your uh, house and go to the nearest monuments in your city or your village. Europe is basically littered with monuments, so uh, you never have to travel more than a couple of kilometers to, to find uh, one. And the competition element makes it really attractive and fun to do. Uh, you know, you start taking one picture and so at some point you get the hang of it, so you want to complete your city or your, uh, maybe uh, get more images or better images or special ones. Um, and you help Wikipedia with this project. The, the, the fact that uh, some people don't feel like they're good enough at editing articles or uh, it, they think it's too difficult and now they see something they're good at, just taking photos and uploading them uh, and they can contribute and maybe they couldn't contribute before that. Um, and the results are visible right away. So if you upload your photos, we want to have them in their lists or maybe even in articles right away. So you can see the next day after you went on your photo safari and you upload them to comments that uh, someone actually uses your photos. Your work is appreciated. And that's probably the most important thing in the volunteer community, like what we are in, that other people appreciate what you're doing. And we const and this is so important, we actually had two slides with, uh, with the same lines on it. Uh, so, how do we make this possible? Uh, we need you. Uh, we're just a, a small group of people organizing it, but 
the really strong part about how to make this work is the people who go out and take photographs. Who go out uh, in, uh, maybe now already, and just take lots of photographs and uh, make it a successful project. But also uh, our partners, uh, the, so sponsors, European partners, local partners, who make it, uh, for example, the, we need lists of monuments. We need to know what to take photos of. And we're not going to invent them. That would be original research. So we want them from our uh, partners. And we already got a lot of them. Um, just a little budget. This project isn't really expensive because we try to have sponsors provide prices and uh, if you, you just have to go in your neighborhood so you don't have a, a lot of travel costs or uh, it's easy and mo very important communication. People need to know about this competition and uh, so we're using the social networks like Twitter or Facebook but we also ha already had uh, some articles. Uh, I noticed uh, some German ra uh, radio station already started twittering about it and it's really being picked up so everyone please twitter about it, uh, use your local paper or, and tell them about it. And yes, we need you to take photographs in uh, September. So, so we would, would like to take this opportunity to let you ask questions, give input. I'm not sure how we are on the time. 15 minutes, so that's plenty of time to ask all the questions you have. Uh, but first of all, everybody who is organizing or semi-organizing Wikilaus monuments anywhere in Europe, can you please stand up? Just stand up. Sure. Just show with how many we are here, in this room only. So um, we can let that microphone perhaps travel around. And um, if you have any questions, uh, now is the time, please. Uh, hi, my name is Alex Ofula. I'm from Kenya. So I was wondering, like, uh, do you have any methods to like filter out uh, guys who upload maybe copyrighted pictures to Wikilaus monuments? Uh, for Wikilaus monuments, you're only allowed to upload your own images. So the upload form, you you have to state like. This is my own work. And of course, people, uh, just like everyone else in the comments, can just say something is their own work and upload it. But we might catch it or we might not. But that's just how, uh, how the comments work. Uh, uh, I assume good faith with people and that they will only upload their own images. But there might be some copyright violations. So is any of this going on in the United States or the Western world? I, I don't mean the Western world, I mean the new world. <laughs> right now, no, because we, uh, we scaled it up from the Netherlands to Europe, which was a huge step. It's from one, one to 15 countries. Um, so to keep ourselves with our heads above water instead of drowning, uh, we had to limit ourselves. Uh, we already got interest from several other countries. Perhaps in the next year, in the next edition, we are able to scale it up once more. I'm not sure uh, who will organize it exactly, but I heard so many countries who want to participate. Um, it might very well be that next year something similar is organized. However, the lessons we took in, the, um, ses in this slide before, this applies to almost every, every similar project which you can organize throughout the world. So I would really like to, or, to, um, to say to uh, chapters and organizations around the world, please organize this kind of contest. It's really a good way to involve more people. Uh, object lists. Thank you. So, so if you want a, a lot of involvement, including from uh, people who are not familiar with, um, you know, uh, everything and all the monuments, etc. Um, so are you planning to have, like, um, I don't know, maybe uh, an iPhone app or an Android app that would list the, the monuments and maybe tell you if, if you can take the picture or not, depending on freedom of panorama or uh, where they are on the map or that kind of stuff. I mean, it seems to me that 
uh, there's a lot of preparatory work uh, to be done before the actual event and, and that uh, maybe some of that could be automated or, or something. Uh, we're wor working on tooling. What we've done is put all the, uh, the monuments uh, we have on Wikipedia in one big database. And based on that, we're uh, now building all these cool tools, like we have uh, the monuments on the map. Uh, so uh, you can easily make a Google map or an open street map with an overlay with the monuments that don't have a photo or some other property. Uh, someone made a layer application. I don't know if you know layer. It's an augmented re reality tool. So you can use your phone, look through it, and see uh, which buildings are actually a monument with some information. And uh, we're heavily working on the tooling to make it really easy for uh, everyone to find monuments. So uh, you can go out and take pictures because just browsing to the list, that's probably too difficult for most users. The, the map uh, Lodewijk showed of, uh, of Leiden with all the, the, the pins on it, that would be one of the things so you can just print a map of your town with um, one, uh, just a map with pins and next to it a list of the actual building so you know the address. So that you don't have to photograph every building because you didn't know which one you needed. That's actually what we did that's easy. In, uh, in old Dutch cities all the buildings are monuments. You can just take photos of the whole street and then sort them out back home. And yeah, we're trying to make it easy for people to, to go out. Uh, the lower the barrier, the more people will participate. Yeah, did you think of putting a side notice and then sending people to using the geo, the IP address, putting a geo location and then say, okay, these are the monuments around you that you have to take pictures of? Uh, yes, similar we, to the fundraiser. We, we plan on using the, the, the site notice uh, for the Wikipedias, uh, or at least for all sites based on the, co uh, the country someone is in, so we can attract more, uh, more people. We actually did that last year on the Dutch Wikipedia. We had a local site notice uh, in September pointing people to the project so they could take photographs and that attracted a lot of people. Yeah, we yeah we need to use geolocation. For example, the German Wikipedia is applicable for Germany and for Austria and for Switzerland. So yes, we have to know where someone is is to point them in the right direction. Um, just a quick one. Uh, I know you and I were talking about this uh, earlier with regards to possibly having an event in Perth run by ourselves. Um, with regards to getting a list of all the monuments, uh, how would you go about doing that? Um, so what we did here is we did not want to create our own definition of a monument because in some countries I know it's very hard to find an actual list of monuments. Uh, in Germany, for example, they have big problems with finding them. However, the government usually, at least in the Western world, has lists of protected buildings. That is the definition we use. So we go to the government and we tell them, okay, so most people right now find monuments very boring and they don't want to do anything with it. So we can help you to make it a bit more interesting and we can help you to make monuments sexy. And that's how we actually, uh, and a lot of these governmental organizations, they see how it worked out in the Netherlands. They see 12,500 pictures. Wow, that's, that's like 10 times as much as we would ever hoped to, uh, to collect. And that way, uh, and also we, we can get rid of a lot of errors in their lists. So we have actually good incentives to persuade them to uh, cooperate with us. Any further questions, suggestions? Remarks. Uh, I'm new to the wiki loves monuments and I was wondering, I've just uh, finished uh, scanning my father's pictures from Europe during World War II. Does it have, and a lot of monuments are in, uh, included in the pictures, does it have any incentive putting on uh, pictures since uh, 42, 1942? Of course, these are probably very beautiful pictures, but uh, we have the rule that you can only upload the images you took yourself because you are joining in, in the competition. So um, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, is your father still alive? I didn't mean to join the competition, yeah. but it's a contribution. And of my course. father is not alive anymore. That's why I yeah. took all the pictures and scanned them right now. 
Okay, that would be awesome for on the comments. It would be great. We always love uh, photos, old photos. And uh, well, what country is it in? The pictures are from the Netherlands, Belgium, uh, France, Germany, up to Iran. Oh, great. Uh, after receiving the photos, I don't know if you followed up in like uh, trying to improve articles re relating to these photos or maybe having new articles in Wikipedia for the photos. And if so, uh, how was the uptake on that? So th these volunteers who created these lists, they are really involved with the topic monuments. They really like the topic. So they are continuously throughout the work working on the topics. And as soon as there are photos, it's easier for them to actually create, a, uh, create an article about it. So that is actually happening. We as an organization are not doing that, but the community is definitely onto it. The second point also is that a lot of the people who submitted photos, but who never were in the Wikipedia community, they also, we also saw some of these people suddenly starting editing. We saw them uploading more photos after the contest, and some of them kept involved. And I think that is really great, because that's also uh, one way to get more people involved in Wikipedia. Only one short remark. Um, you told us it's easy and it's um, a little budget. We know that it's a lot of work and you did most of it. And you did a wonderful work joining all these European people to one great, which will be a great project. And I would like to thank you for your wonderful work you did. Martin and Lorelei. So I hope you're all going to take photographs now, and we'll hope to see you all in uh, September. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Um, so if you click on how to organize your own scavenger hunt, um, you'll see basically just uh, some guidelines here, um, helpful suggestions for how to choose your location, um, how to compile your list of targets, um, and basically just uh, some organizing and publicizing hints. I won't go through it all because you can read all of this on the site and uh, learn all about it. Um, so basically, if, if you are interested in uh, creating a Wikipedia Takes Your City event, um, what you want to do is get an administrator account on the site. And right now, uh, the way to do that is actually um, there's kind of a bottleneck because you either have to ask me or ask Richard. Um, but there's, there's actually there's instructions for how to contact us on here as well. Um, and once you have an administrator account, you can go in and set up all of the settings for your event. And so I'll go in here and show you how that works real quick. So uh, it's all pretty self-explanatory if you're creating a new event. You just come in here and click Create New Event. Um, you, you're going to fill out uh, all the relevant information about your specific event, like where it is, when it's going to be, um, what you want to call it. Um, and then uh, what you want to do also is set up like a specific time and location that you're going to have everyone meet at at the beginning, um, because the, the events are normally just like a one-day event. Um, where You'll have all these, you'll promote it you know, for maybe like a few weeks beforehand, and then you'll have all of your teams congregate at a specific location at the beginning of the day. Um, and that's where you, know, you can hand out the list of targets, you can give them instructions or whatever, um, and then they can all split out from there and go take over the city and photograph everything. And then at the end of it, everybody meets back and you, know, you have a big party at some you know, bar with Wi-Fi or something like that, um, and then everybody you know, brings their laptops and they upload their photos through this tool. Um, and so once you've got, once you've decided like where your starting 
places and your ending places. Then you fill it all, all out on here so that when people come to the site, um, they'll see all the information advertised. Um, let's see. And there's also a place in here where you can add a uh, link to a Wikipedia page for it or links to MySpace or Facebook pages if you want to use those to help promote your event. So I'll just show you one of these as an example. So here's Wikipedia Takes Nashville 2, which um, actually is not a real event because I, I don't actually live in Nashville anymore. But um, this is just kind of a template um, of, a, of a filled out notice uh, with all the information in it. And then once you've filled out all the information for your event, then you want to fill out your list of targets, which are all of the places that you've identified it would be useful to have photographs taken of. Um, and generally, these are locations where, for example, there may be like an article or a stub on Wikipedia, but there aren't any photographs to illustrate it. Um, and one way that you can uh, typically uh, find out these articles is because there, there's a template um, photographs requested that a lot of people use uh, add to article talk pages to list articles that need illustrations. So there's actually a corresponding category for those you can go into um, and just see what articles have already had illustration requests. Um, otherwise, you know, you can just go through them on your own and, you know, see what, what needs illustrations or not. Um, or you know, some cities have actually taken the approach that they're just going to list every single, you know, notable building or structure in the city it, with the idea that eventually most of them would probably be useful somewhere on Wikipedia. So uh, when you're adding a target here, there's a couple things that you need to identify for each target. Um, you'll give it a name, uh, you, and you want to associate a particular commons category with it so that once it's uploaded, it'll automatically get categorized. Because um, the idea here is that um, we want to minimize the amount of uh, effort that is necessary to get all of these images published and categorized and uh, sorted so that they're useful for the community to take advantage of. Um, then you'll also put in the street address uh, so people know where it is. You'll, then you can assign it a points value um, because if you have like a, you know, a location that's way on the outskirts of your city and you, know, you don't think anybody will photograph it otherwise, but it would be really useful, then you can just give it a higher points value to encourage people to go take, point, take pictures of it. Um, and then also, if you want, you can organize your targets by zone, um, which you know could correspond to like particular neighborhoods or geographical areas or thematic areas. Um, like for instance, I think in uh, the most recent uh, Wikipedia takes Manhattan, they actually had like a whole uh, uh, group of targets that were things that weren't buildings, like people jaywalking or uh, you know. Uh, double parked cars or, you know, unicycles and things like that. So you can really be as creative with this as you want and, you know, add whatever targets you think might be interesting to use on, it, on Wikipedia. So um, once you've actually had your teams go out and take all their photographs, um, well, actually, I, one thing that I should mention um, is that in the course of doing these contests, one thing that we found makes things a lot easier um, is that if you if you tell the teams when they're going out and photographing their targets, um, if they also do reference photographs. And uh, the way that works is um, they'll typically, like you'll give out index cards to all the teams and Sharpies or whatever. And so before they actually take a picture of the building or uh, whatever they're taking the picture of, they'll write down what it is on the index card um, and maybe um, you know, uh, any other specific information, like if it's from a certain angle or something. And then um, they'll take a photograph of the index card itself. Um, so that after the images are uploaded, um, between each image uh, or sets of images, you'll see the reference card. And so you'll remember what it was you took the photo of in case, you know, you forgot because, you know, it's a totally generic looking building. 
So uh, once everybody comes back to your uh, meeting place at the end and they're going to upload their photos, um, you just send them to this site on their own laptops and they just click on the name of the event and they'll see um, a link here. And then it, well, this, is, this also has like, all the information about the event and you can click on it to see the list of all the targets. So this is, this is useful like if people want to print these out beforehand, there's actually a link here that you can use to uh, print out a printable, printable version of it. Um, but once they've, they've uh, taken all their photos and they come back to the venue, then they'll want to click on upload your photos. So here uh, they'll just put in whatever team name they've come up with. So I'm going to do... Uh, Team Wikimania. And if they want to, they can actually put in a credit line that's different than the name of their team. Like if they want to give credit to the specific people on their team, then they can list their names here. Um, and then they'll choose uh, what license they prefer to release all of their images under. Um, and this is nice because this means they don't have to select a separate license for all 200 images that they're uploading. They just choose it once and it automatically assigns it to all of them. So once they're logged in here, they just see this upload form, um, and there's, there's actually two different upload forms that are available. Um, the default one uh, is actually a flash uploading form that lets you upload multiple photos at once. Um, so you can just like choose an entire directory of photos and upload them all at once. There's also a non-flash upload form that people can use um, if they're on a browser or operating system that doesn't have flash support. So I'll just uh, show you guys real quick how this works. So I'll click on Select Files, and I'll just choose some files that I want to upload. And um, typically on most computers, you can just um, shift, shift Select to do more than one, or Command Select, or whatever it is on a particular operating system. So I'm going to choose all these, hit Open, and you'll see they each get uploaded. And it gives you a little, nice little progress meter. Um, and then once you're done with those, you click Sort My Photos. And you get a nice little thumbnail of each one. Um, and this is basically where the team gets to review their own photos and put in extra information about them. So for example, um, if you want, they, you can uh, tweak the names of the photos before they get uploaded. Um, and each, each name actually, each photo gets prefixed um, with a title that includes the name of the contest and the name of the team. Um, and that's for a couple of different reasons. One is just so that um, afterwards the, the photos can easily be associated with the different teams, um, although they also get assigned to a unique category. Uh, but the main reason is actually just to prevent file name conflicts because a bunch, like a lot of people will just, you know, upload photos from their camera that will have really generic titles to them. So this helps prevent uh, file name conflicts with existing files on commons or files that other teams are uploading. So after, after they've uh, customized the title, they choose which target this is associated with. Um, and so the, these are taken from all the titles that you've already filled in. So you just choose that. And if you, uh, there's a section here where they can fill in a description. Um, but another thing you can do is there's also a generate description so that if the team doesn't want to like sit there and type out descriptions for all of them, they can just automatically generate them based on the target and the location of the contest. Um, also, if they want, if they have a, a photo that's like a duplicate or one that they don't want, they can go ahead and choose to delete it. Um, and if it's a photograph, uh, if it's a reference photograph of uh, like an index card with information, they can mark it as a reference photo. And so that way it won't get published, but it still gets uh, kept with the other photos in the tool. So once that's all been done, then you just save changes. Oh, but I have, I have a duplicate file because I uploaded one earlier. Let's see here. Um, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Actually, hold on. Let me, let me do this again here, sorry. Okay. 
Okay, so there are my three photos, and I hit save changes, and I, I forgot to give them targets, so I didn't actually get any points. Generate, generate. Okay, so I've given them all descriptions and targets. So I see that my team has a provisional score of 35 points. So I can already get an idea of like, you know, how my team is going to compare with the others in the contest. And once all of the uh, different teams have uploaded all their photos, then the administrator will log in to review them all. So let's see, I'll log out as a team, and then I'll go back to the admin interface. Oops, out caps lock. And in here I just click on review teams and photos, and I see all, the, all of the different teams that have uh, signed on and have uploaded photos for this contest. So here's new team, which was the one I just created. So, and he, here I get to review all of the photos that that team uploaded, and if I want, I can further tweak the description or the file name if I want to. Um, and once they're all reviewed, then I just click Publish Photos to Commons, and it goes through and automatically um, uploads all of them to Commons. It also automatically creates a new category for that team um, under the category for the contest. Um, Oh, it, it does all of the uploads under uh, a bot account, um, and so it's, it's good, it's, um, and the reason why that's um, okay is because all of the people who are using this administrator interface are people who have personally interacted with me or Richard, so we know who they are and hopefully they're a trusted person, um, but they, they do actually get uploaded uh, under a bot account, um, and so that's why it's important that the teams fill out um, their credit information so that, you know, it gives them adequate credit as well. Um, another thing is that um, it automatically um, assigns a template to each of the photos that gets uploaded to identify it with the contest. So uh, let me show you a couple of examples real quick so you can see what the uh, end result looks like. Um, do you know what the URL is for it? Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Okay, let me, let me show um, the photos real quick and then we'll do the video. Uh, oops, misspelled it. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So here's the category in Commons for Wikipedia Takes Manila, and there's actually um, probably over a thousand photographs from this contest. This was one that was um, done recently um, by Josh just this past year. Uh, let's see. So let me pick one of these. So you'll see that um, this, this was all completely constructed automatically by the tool. Um, you'll see that it has a nice little template here at the top that says which team took it and that they were a participant in this particular contest, and it has a link back to the contest information page uh, at the tool. Um, you can also create a unique logo for your contest if you want to, and you can upload that through the tool as well, so that, that gets uh, associated with each image that gets uploaded. Um, and then the attribution information is included here, and it's pretty simple. Um, and it, it, you'll see that, um, well, let's see. Category. Hmm. I'm not sure what Intramuros is, but. Um, Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Um, yeah, so each, each photo also gets automatically categorized according to the target. So the nice thing about that is that as the event or organizer, you don't have to go back through a thousand photos and do all of the categorization individually. So this should save you a lot of time. All right. So um, what should I search for? Wikis take Manhattan? Okay. I 
I don't know how good the Wi-Fi is, so I can't guarantee this will work. Uh, let's see. <laughs> And we probably don't have audio either, I'm not sure. Wiggies Take Manhattan. Wiggies Take Manhattan is a photo scavenger hunt. And its goal is to create freely licensed photos for Streets Wiki and Wikipedia articles, okay. which don't currently have your packet, you'll see the most important thing on there is the list okay, cool. of targets. Wiki's Take Manhattan. Wiki's Take Manhattan is a photo scavenger hunt. And its goal is to create freely licensed photos for Streets Wiki and Wikipedia articles, which don't currently have photos. Uh, if you open up your packet, you'll see the most important thing on there is the list of targets. On your marks! Get set! Go! Good luck, everyone! Here we have to go, 131 Charles. Charles is down, F3. Yeah. We're on bikes, so we can cover anything faster than everybody. If we go to Staten Island, we're getting every Vanderbilt on this list. We're going to Brooklyn, which means we can cover a heck of a lot more territory. Is it? Everybody else is on. Foot. Let me let me pause it for a minute so I can finish downloading. I apologize for the technical problem. What? The From the beginning. Okay. Well, let's see if this works. Building around downtown Manhattan. I am the card holder. What do I got? Rollerblade. Hey, Run. Go get it. Wikipedia is something we both use a lot, and it's frustrating when there isn't a photo. So it's kind of cool to be able to contribute. <laughs> Streets Wiki is a community created encyclopedia for transportation, urban environmental, and public space issues. For instance, uh, New York has recently installed a number of dedicated bus lanes which are distinguished by their uh, terracotta coloring. People can read about this on Streets Wiki to find out what a dedicated bus lane is, how it works. They can also read about this in other parts of the country and the world where they might not yet have dedicated bus lanes and we'll now have a photo for our dedicated bus lane article. Green bike lane, green bike lane. Uh, R4. Perfect. Whoa. We had a block party. We just came upon it. And even though it's a small one, 8th Avenue and Jane Street, it looks like a very intimate one. Our critical comments face the licenses that make it all legally sound. So that means, uh, you know, Livable Streets Network can use it, and Wikipedia can use it, and then everyone in this room can distribute it and share it. And so, um, without Creative Commons, there's no uh, kind of legal agreement, there's no public license uh, to use the work. We're just uploading the pictures that they took from their cameras onto our computers, so then we can upload them to Commons. First prize of a dinner with Jimmy Wales at the lovely Pure Food and Wine restaurant goes to Expost Photo. We won. Yeah, we won. We, we do heart the internets and the free culture and the free software. So it, it all sort of fits back together. All right, that's basically it. Um, I just want to open it up for questions now if anybody wants more information. Yep. Alright, um, my question actually is, I have two questions, and this is coming from the experience we had of Wikipedia Dave Spinella, we sell the Wikipedia Dave, 
and which you would like to build the biggest Wikipedia page recipient event today. Not sure if it's accurate, but regardless of that, the first question is, will there be possibilities for, addition, for adding additional licenses? Because one of the concerns for us when we organized Wikipedia Days Manila was what license you would use. And I noticed that there were only three licenses available, all CC licenses. Like, for us, we were thinking, you know, since these pictures were licensed in the Philippines, let's say we wanted to add the Philippines-specific CC license, which would be hard to change if 1,000 photographs after, after you uploaded them. So, like, would there be an option, for example, for organizers to add a specific license to the uploading interface when if we decide to use a license other than standard CC BY, CC BY SA, or CC0? Yeah, actually it would be pretty easy for me to add that in because the licenses are actually their own table um, in the database for this on the tool server. So I could just add in another form field in the admin interface that's, you know, like choose another license that you would like to add for your contest and that could just get added in pretty easily. All right, and the second question is, um, also coming from our experience of Wikipedia Days Manila, was that we have a lot of, um, during the uploading party, we had a lot of issues with um, some people were complaining, for example, that reference photos were too hard to use, among other things. So that's why I think you know the tribe that there were the file names instead were the references, were the reference names, the site place, the place names, instead of have them having the index card because you know they thought it was kind of difficult to use. So my my question would be is that. Do you think there are alternatives to using index cards and reference photos which would be easier on the part of participants to identify which photos they are uploading? Um, well, yeah, I think there's a lot of different ways people could do it. The index cards are just, they're a totally optional idea that's just suggested because it's low tech and easy to do. Um, but other things people could do if they wanted is, you know, they could just like carry around an iPhone with them and take notes about, you know, what buildings they're taking pictures of and what order they're taking them in. Because um, really, like, that's all that's, all that's necessary is for you to remember what, what you've taken pictures of until you get to the uploading party. Um, so any way that teams can come up with to do that is fine. You know, there's probably a lot of different ways that are possible. Oh, and then I thought of a final question. Sorry. Um, with respect to the issue I had earlier with duplicate file names and photos, because there are some teams in Wikipedia Takes Manila where they had issues with duplicate file names, and it was extremely hard for us to find duplicate file names um, and photos which were affected by it, as well as multiple uploads, because at that time, the internet in the Philippines is so slow we can't rely on that uploading massive numbers of files all at once. So sometimes we had to do it manually, as I think we've told you after the 15th of January. <coughs> so is there a way for us, for example, can there be an easier way for us to screen, let's say, for duplicate photographs so that we can easy, more easily delete? Yeah, I think that's that's definitely an issue, especially if you have like one team up uploading like multiple hundreds of photos. Um, it gets really difficult to like go through and find which ones might have problems. Um, so, because right now you're right, all it does is give you a generic error message, and then you have to find which one it is and fix it. Which, as you saw, I didn't want to take the time to do, so I just went and re-uploaded them to save myself the trouble. Um, so, probably the way it should work in the future is if there are any errors it should highlight the photos in some way, like make them, make, the, make them red or something so that you can easily find which ones need to be fixed. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm always open to any new ideas for improving it. Um, like in fact, just recently I added the zones feature because that was requested um, by a guy who's uh, gonna be doing Wikipedia takes uh, Montreal uh, in, a, in a month from now. So if you guys have any ideas for improving it, definitely let me know because I would love to add new features to it to make it more useful. Um, in fact, like one of, one of the ones I was already gonna work on at some point is adding the ability to auto-rotate images because you know a lot of people take images with their camera sideways and it's nice to be able to just do that in here. It would be nice to be able to do that in here instead of having to rely on the community to do it at some point later. Um, right, so um, the, you showed that, that really nice tool. Um, I, I was wondering if, um, do you think that this tool should uh, remain uh, as a separate tool on the tool server, or do you think that maybe um, it should be folded into the, the upload wizard? I mean, I know that Neil and, and Yen uh, at the foundation and are working on 
um, extending the, the upload wizard to make it work with uh, campaigns like the Wikilove's monuments, etc. Do you think that will be a, a natural evolution of your tool, or do you think it should uh, it's uh, too specific and it should remain separate? Um, I, th I think that um, as the upload wizard evolves, a lot of the features of this tool will probably become redundant. Um, right now, though, it's pretty much the only easy way to um, deal with a lot of different people uploading a ton of images at once that all need to be published and sorted extremely quickly for a particular event. Um, but I think, like as you were saying, like once um, they add campaign functionality to Upload Wizard and once they also add multi-file uploadability to Upload Wizard, um, I think you know a lot of a lot of these features will be redundant and you know it might not even be make sense to continue maintaining it. I, you know we might just want to send people to use the Upload Wizard instead, which I, I think would actually be a lot better if the, you know this sort of functionality is built into uh, the site functionality itself. targets um, to the tool? I, I, I mean, you know, the putting to this admin, uh, to, to, to the admin object by object, when you have, say, 10,000 of them, it would be really big pain. So it would be better to uh, simply upload the, the, the complete database of these objects, that's it. And then another problem is for <coughs> if, uh, that if you have many objects, so then there should be probably multi-choice. I mean, for example, select the territory, then select the sub-territory, and then you have list of not uh, several thousand, but uh, around, let's say, 100 objects, which is easier to, to find in this way than just have the complete one list of objects for all your content. content. Yeah, that, I think those are great suggestions. I think, especially for like larger cities and bigger events, I think those would be really useful features. And is the tool uh, translatable? Um, actually, no. There's not any easy way to do interface translation for this right now. Um, it's all in English at the moment. Although I've had some people um, approach me about doing specific language translations for it. Um, obviously, this is this is another reason why having this functionality in Upload Wizard would be a lot better because the interface messages for that are all translated in Translate Wiki. Um, and unfortunately, when when I built this, I it was just on my own spare time, just for fun, and I didn't really. This was also before I worked at the Wikimedia Foundation, um, and so I was kind of just like building it for. Um, you know, just limited use, and it's never really been developed into a fully um, in internationalizable tool. Um, but I would, and I, you know, if anybody's also interested in further in helping to develop this tool more, um, it's in a group account on the tool server, and so anyone who has an account on the tool server can be granted access to this repository and go in and help build this tool further, which would be really nice. Anybody else? All right, thanks a lot.